you ask me what's my go-to tropical tiki cocktail, I'd be hard pushed to pick between this, the Trade Winds, and the Painkiller. While they are different cocktails, the coconut vibes and the black blended rum kind of do give them a rough similarity. This cocktail is definitely not complicated, but I would sort of say it was more tropical than I would tiki. But don't let that fool you. The apricot flavors in this is an absolute game changer. And for my money, apricot is one of the most underrated flavors when it comes to rum cocktails. Now up to now, my two rum combo for this cocktail has been Putter's Gunpowder Proof Spiced and the Boutique Rum Company Signature Serve Number no. 1. It's kind of a blend of Jamaica and Martinique rum. I kind of prefer the opposite way to what Beach Bumberry has done and Martin Kate have done, where they've called for a black uh, blended Jamaican rum and a lighter sort of white rum. I've gone the opposite way around. I've gone for that kind of uh, black blended rum without the Jamaican vibes, but I've gone for the Jamaican vibes in the white rum. But I've never done the breakdown like I'm going to do today. So in a sec, I'm going to show you how to make it. We'll have a rum combo deep dive to see if there's any other flavors I like as much as what I do this. And then stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to give you two amazing riffs to really tiki-fy this cocktail. But then also, don't forget to check out my other channel, Steve the Barman Extra, because I'm there. We're going to have the plantation rum deep dive, and we're also going to have the spiced rum deep dive. Do any of those rums make a better trade winds than what we're going to make here? So let's crack on and make the cocktail. Now, I firmly believe that this is a flash blended cocktail. I don't mean like your blender and make a slush puppy, but I mean like, like I've got a stick blender, a milkshake blender, if you like a spindle blender. I think that is perfect. However, if you haven't got one of those, um, the old swizzle stick, the lele stick, uh, that is the close second and you just kind of do that. You kind of make fire with it that. I, th I think that is a very, very close second. But for me, when you shake the cocktail, you do actually lose the, like the dilution, the aeration that you get from swizzling or flash blending. So for me, 100% flash blended. If you haven't got a flash blender, a stick blender, milkshake blender, whatever you want to call it, get yourself a swizzle stick. Now, we're going to dissect the rums in a minute, but this is my go-to as it stands. It might not be become the end of the video, but it is at the moment. And this this recipe is so, so easy. It's virtually equal measures of everything you've got. So uh, I'm going Pusses Gunpowder Proof, uh, 30 mil, one ounce there. So that is my, as Martin Kate Smuggler's Cove, that is my category five, I think it is, the black blended rum. We then go category two, which is kind of the light uh, blended rum. And this is, I'll talk about this in two seconds, but this is where my um, sort of Jamaican influence comes. So I'm going 30 mil, one ounce of that. Uh, let's talk apricot liqueur, please, for the love of, I don't get militant about too many things. Uh, you're free to go and buy whatever liqueurs you want. But I promise you, if there is a Gifar, silent D, if there is a Gifar premium alternative, buy it. Because that is hands down 10x times any apricot liqueur you will find on the market. The same with the Franvard de Rance. The same with, what else we got? The pineapple, the banana. Oh my God, the, Fran the posh premium G5 banana is like any kind of banana, creme de banana. It's like on steroids. So the posh G5 range is phenomenal and I stand by that. So the apricot liqueur. And apricot for me, it's one of those that does need a bit more love in rum world. I don't understand why it doesn't get more love, but it's such a delicious flavor. Right, 30 mil, one ounce. So 30 mil, 30 mil, 30 mil. Uh, I'm gonna do the lemon juice and I've kind of filled this up because I need quite a bit of lemon juice to uh, do the rest of this. But again, 30 mil, one ounce, oh, there we go, or a little bit of spillage. 30 mil, one ounce of lemon juice. Now, you could go 30 mil, one ounce of your coconut. Um, and for those of you at home in the UK, um, I have swapped to Monin uh, Le Fui range over the ODK range. I still love these, but flavor-wise, these edge it. The only reason I still am not 100% there yet is because I know these things flipping last months and months on, on the back bar. As a home consumer, these last flipping ages, and this K stuff is phenomenal in taste. This edges it in taste. I can categorically state that these will last six months opening, even though Monin say use within sort of six weeks. They will last easily six months. I can categorically confirm that. Don't sue me. Uh, they're not going to kill you. Um, but 
I haven't yet got the confidence to turn around and say these Mon and Lefoy will last, will stay open for a year. Some people tell me that they will do quite easily, but these, depending on how much you, look, it comes back to that thing. If you're not going to use, um, if you're not going to get through that in six months, don't buy. If you're not going to get through that in six months, don't buy. It's as simple as that. Buy, make your own, like make that much, make whatever you need. But if you can get through something like this in three to six months, perfect. A 10 out 12 quid, whatever it is. Now, uh, for me, 40, and I have, oops, sorry, drink stuff. I've stolen this at the drink stuff show group. Uh, so we are going for 45 mil, one and a half ounces, purely because it's not as sweet as a syrup. It's 50% coconut, 50% um, sugar with bits. So that's why I've gone one and a half. I think if you had a coconut syrup or what's the other one? Coco Lopez in a tin, I think you could go equal measures. The Coco Lopez, I think, is sweeter than this, assuming that's the front right way around there we go um just judge it play it taste it judge it by your own ear right what i'm going to do crushed ice a couple of agitated cubes flash blend then serve up nice cold tiki glass just shake it, just sort of dump it in there uh we're going to top up with some more crushed ice there we go lovely just kind of get that up there and then the garnish for this uh, there's a couple of cool things coming. You could add, a I've got pineapple front. You can add a cherry as well. Of course you can. But uh, the cool thing we need to do is the trade winds is kind of a, kind of a nod to like hurricane season and all that sort of stuff. So we get a, like a cocktail umbrella, kind of push it up, right? And then let's just get that little thing. And then we kind of, there we go. We make it look like it's had a hurricane sort of thing. And we just pop that down there. And there we go. And that is the trade winds. Obviously, the previous rum dissections I've done on this channel, the cocktails have only used one rum. So playing about with those cocktails has been super simple. No matter what rum I put in there, it was easy. But when you start introducing a second rum to the cocktail, well, the sheer volume of combinations is humongous. There is no way in the world with what I'm about to do, I could cover all the possibilities just on my collection alone. So what I've done is just pick a few combinations and test them. Some rough calculations alone, you know, even just these white rums that I've got here and those two, you know, there's 20 combinations. My notes I had down there and the rum, the white rums I was gonna use, there was 48 combinations. And that was just using those two dark black rums. I was actually gonna add that into the mix as well because I adore that, that is gorgeous. And let's not forget the obvious choice, Plantation OFTD. Don't forget, I'm saving that for its own video on the other channel. So rum dissection, let me just kind of run you through what I've done. The very astute ones amongst you will have cottoned on straight away because the separator there, that's the cocktail that I've made with kind of the, the boutique rum company, the signature blend there. So that marks the end of those five, if you like. So what I've done with these five, I've gone that Jamaican funky style in the white rum with the pusses, that sort of Demerara dark rum vibes, if you like, in the dark rum there, in the pusses. But then what I've done in these rums, I've gone for Worthy 109, which should have that inherent Jamaican funky note to it, and then mixed it, a la kind of Smuggler's Cove, a la Beach Bum Berry, with a lighter rum, whether it's Column Still um, category, I call it... I call it five, four minus in Smuggler's Cove because they don't actually have a number for it. But category two, essentially, light blended rums and then the lighter unaged column still rums. So as you can see, two kind of categories, but I could have gone for on forever. Now, rightly or wrongly, that is my benchmark. Pusses and the Boutique Rum Company uh, signature blend number one. That is my benchmark. I adore that. That, if I'm picking that as a 10 out of 10, is there any better? There's a better one. I'm going to have to rethink this, right? Because I was going to say, if that's my 10 out of 10, can we do better? So this is my 8 out of 10. Now look, spoiler alert, if that if I brought that down to an 8 out of 10, there is nothing here scoring less than 6 out of 10. <laughs> it's such an amazing cocktail. The apricot, the coconut, the dark light rum blend is phenomenal. But there are taste differences. And actually, way more than I was expecting. In my head... I didn't really think the rums that I used would actually they make that much difference. But oh, flipping hell. They, they, with these rums, 
They really do. So basically, I, I would, as I've already said, I would loosely class these in two categories. We've got the sort of Jamaican influence in the white rum there, and we've got the Jamaican influence in the dark rum there. For me, I'm in this camp. I love the pusses, that sort of Demerara, richer, darker rum vibe coming off there, with the light white rum doing that sort of funk element. I prefer that to what I do that, where the sort of Jamaican in that, and bear in mind, it's not too funky. It's got a little bit of funk to it, but I prefer those to these, which is very interesting because every single cocktail that I see puts a Jamaican dark black rum with a lighter column steel light blended white rum. So it's not often that I disagree with like Beach Bum or Martin Kate or anything like that, but I tell you what, I defy anyone. I defy, and I've had a few comments where it's like, what am I doing? Why am I, you know, Martin Kate and Beach Bum Berry have already done this. Why am I doing this? I've had a few comments like that. I defy anyone to try these combinations and not love them. Now, let's just very quickly dissect down here. Look, uh, Beach Bum Berry, which way? Where? Beach Bum Berry calls for uh, a Puerto Rican rum. Okay, so. On that, we could kind of go, so if that, we're translating that to Smuggler's Cove, we're trying to go sort of, I call it four minus or less than four, or whatever you want to call it. Martin Kate doesn't have a category for that, but it's just under four. So we're going for those lightly aged white rums, okay? So that's the Don Q is in that. And for me, with something like the Worthy Park, no. It's, it's a decent, it's a fun, it's a decent cocktail. You know, as I say, it's a six out of 10. It really is. I'm drinking that all flipping day long. It is so tasty, but they're better. So then when we talk about the rums with more character, uh, the Eldorado kind of gives it just a slight nod to that sort of coffee vibes, chocolatey vibes. It's, if you taste Eldorado three-year-olds, you kind of know where I'm coming out. It's not my favorite daiquiri rum, but it does kind of work in cocktails like this. I do kind of love that. It's not a light, clean, crisp daiquiri rum, but I love it because of the Demerara vibes in these sort of cocktails, it works. The pick of the bunch, actually, the two, well, um, I was going to say two. The three pick of the bunch, uh, Equiano, Santa Teresa, Claro, and the Dawley's three-year-old. For me, and that is Martin Kate's Smuggler's Cove kind of vibes. For me, those three, category two with a category five, I think it is, a dark black blended black rum. I think it's five, six. What is it? I, I forget what category it is now. Uh, but for those, they are my picks. However, when we take the conversation up this end, and we've got the pusses, which brings those really rich, dark rum vibes, Demerara vibes, and all that. The, 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 what's the word? There's a word beginning with unctuousness. Is that the word I'm looking for? Have, have I just pulled that out of the air? I'm trying to, I'm trying to progress my vocabulary. The, the sort of <laughs> lusciousness coming off that pusses with these is just next level. Now let's get a couple of things here. Um, I've often compared the Veritas, Probitas to you guys in the US, to the Boutique Rum Company, uh, Siggy one, no, I call it Siggy, Siggy, Signature number one. Um, 20 quid a bottle, UK, maybe a couple of quid, 22 quid a bottle, 35, 36, maybe more. I, I, I genuinely don't see why you would buy that over that. Yes, the different blends, Barbados, Ginger Maker, uh, Jamaica and Martinique, they are different blends, but they bring similar vibes. And for me, for price, there is just, I, I just adore that. I, I, for the price, compared to that, I adore it. And then obviously as we move up here, all right, I've got these in the wrong order. We've got an Agricole there. Uh, the Jamaican should have been there, to be fair, the, the rum bar. So we've got the Agricole uh, French Martinique rum. And then we've got the lower ABV Jamaican rum bar, which for my money is probably, if you want that sort of Jamaican inherent funk, uh, off, a, off a, a cheaper rum, that's phenomenal. And to be fair, the rum bar gold is pretty damn decent as well. I mean, I've not even attacked the gold rums in this. As I say, there's hundreds of combinations, hundreds that we could go, we could go down dissecting this video. I've just kept it to white rum. I've just kept it as a la Smuggler's Cove, a la Beach Bum Berry. I mean, that's really decent. But then we've got the clarin up here. And honestly, this may be, it depends how the videos drop, this may be the second and third video in a row. Clarin Neat, I, don't get me wrong, I love Clarin Neat. 
it wouldn't be a rum that I go to to sip neat, but I do enjoy it neat. I understand and enjoy the different taste that it brings. But oh my God, in a cocktail, those two complement each other so, so well. Look, let's, let's try and break this down to price. That's an absolute steal. It is. Uh, worthy 109, bearing in mind it's a litre bowl, is an absolute steal. I potentially would go another round. I potentially would go Worthy 109 with, with something like this. But then I think, I think why I love this cocktail so much is because of the pusses. I really do think the pusses brings that extra level to it, which the Worthy 109 doesn't. And it's fascinating. I, I, I am. I'm totally up this end. I'm totally up there. Would I change the blend that I use? The, 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 the Clarion Communal, it's a decent price. It's not as cheap as the, um, the signature, the uh, Boutique Rum Company signature. As a cocktail, I much prefer this. I really, oh, those, those vibes, I do prefer that. But as a price point, you know, that, that's pretty damn decent. No, I absolutely love these rum dissections. Uh, a couple of things for you guys. Drop a comment below. What cocktail do you want me to hit up next? What cocktail am I going to dis dissect? But also, if you're a Trade Winds fan, then let me know what rums you use uh, in the comments below. What combination of rums? It has to be two rums. Although, could you do one rum? Could you do, you know, with, with something like, and I've lost the bottle, with something like Smith & Cross actually cover both bases? That again, that is another question that we have to ask for this cocktail. Now, two riffs that you could do. My first riff that I absolutely swear by, the bitters, adding some bitters to this. Now, um, I'm gonna bring these two to the party first off. I've never bothered to replace that. This is the Bitter Truth. Let's, let's give you a close up on it. The Bitter Truth Pimento Dram. I have never bothered to replace that. I love it. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore it. But when you've got those bitters, which I nearly bottle kill on those, so I need to replace those, um, cinnamon, allspice, uh, and bakuli tiki bitters. I genuinely don't think you need this because you can, you would only need, you would only use pimento dram in like five, 10 mil, the absolute max, five, but five mil traditionally. Those elemakuli tiki bitters just do that job so, so well without destroying the balance of the cocktail. Uh, so I'm a big fan of those, and I promise you, with that coconut, with the apricot, with the rum kind of blend going on there, I promise you that those tiki bitters are outstanding. Riff number two, and this is a new addition to the bar and I've fallen in love with it. Boom. 10, 15 mil of this. Basically what this is, is uh, Angostura Duramaro. Basically it's a liqueur version of the Angostura bitters and they are outstanding in this. I don't really use Angostura bitters because I've always got the um, Miss Betters bitters. Uh, was that on shot? There we go, slow-mo. Uh, Angostura, uh, the aromatic bitters from Miss Betters bitters. So I don't actually use Angostura too much. Um, my bottle is there, I have got them. But the Amaro, 10, 15 mil in that cocktail, is stunning. But also, if you want to see me dissect another cocktail, dive into that video right there. And don't forget, there's the plantation and the spiced rums coming on my second channel.